A common way to get a better understanding of the errors made by our model is by looking at something called a confusion matrix. Confusion matrix gives us information about true negatives, true positives, and false positives, and false negatives. In scikit-learn, you can plot a confusion matrix using this plot confusion matrix method. We pass our model to this method and the data set on which we want to plot the confusion matrix. In this particular case, I'm passing our validation set, our X valid and Y valid. Remember that in our case, we have a separate validation set, which is called X valid and Y valid. I'm also passing these display labels and I'm telling it to represent these numbers as uh, integers. Okay, so what do we see here? As I said, confusion matrix gives us information about true negatives, true positives, false negatives, and false positives. In our case, we are considering non-fraudulent transactions as negatives and fraudulent transactions as positives. Let's try to understand these numbers in a confusion matrix. Let's start with true negatives. This number, 59,700, it represents the number of examples that are actually non-fraudulent examples. And these examples were also predicted as non-fraudulent by our logistic regression. Next, let's look at true positives. This number 64 represents the number of examples which are actually fraud examples and our logistic regression also classified them as fraud examples. Next, let's look at false positives. This number eight here represents the number of examples which are actually non-fraud examples, but our logistic regression mislabeled them as fraud examples. So these examples are like false alarm. Our logistic regression predicted them as fraud examples, but they are actually non-fraud examples. And finally, this number 38 represents the number of examples which are actually fraud examples, but our logistic regression missed these examples. It classified them as non-fraud examples. Now, this seems like a problem, right? Our logistic regression classifier has missed about one third of the fraud examples. Okay, so now we have a little bit better understanding of the errors made by our logistic regression classifier. Now note that these diagonal entries tell us about perfect predictions by our model and off diagonal entries tell us about what is being mispredicted. Now at this point, you might be wondering about what is positive and negative. We have been using this terminology, true positives, true negatives, false positives and false negatives. But what is exactly positive and negative? There are two kinds of binary classification problems. The first one is about distinguishing between two classes, such as distinguishing between cats and dogs, for instance. The second kind is about spotting a particular class, for example, spotting fraud transaction or spotting spam. In case of spotting problems, there is something that we are interested in spotting. And that thing is called positive. That thing is usually considered as positive. So in our case, in our example, we are interested in spotting these fraud transactions. And so we call fraud transactions as positive class. Now, before we use this plot confusion matrix function to get this fancy uh, confusion matrix, but you can also get a NumPy array of confusion matrix using this confusion matrix function. And this is what you will get. 
You can also calculate confusion matrix with cross validation using this function called cross val predict. Remember that when you carry out cross validation, each example in your data gets to be in the validation set. So when you use this cross val predict, what happens is that it notes for each example when it's in the validation set, whether it's a true positive, true negative, false positive or false negative. And then it creates this confusion matrix from all examples. So in our case, we are passing our X train and Y train and it will give us this confusion matrix. That's all about confusion matrix. In the next video, we will talk about precision and recall.